Hello, I am Marie Contreras. For the last 20 years, I have been a vintage and antique collectibles reseller on eBay. For the last five years, I have run my own pet care business. I write a weekly blog about pet care, and I recently wrote my first book about caring for dogs. I make videos on this channel about growing a small business, saving money, and living life on your own terms. If this sounds like something you would enjoy, stick around. I hope you enjoy what I created for you. Hello. In today's video, I want to share something that is something that I love. It's planning. I love a good plan. The, the planner that I use all the time that I carry with me is the calendar section on my phone. It's free. It's easy. I've used it for years. I put all my appointments and schedules on my phone calendar. If there's something that I want to remind myself to do, I will pick a time and schedule it on my phone calendar. I also sync my work calendar scheduling app with my uh, phone calendar. So all my work walks are on there. If I have to ship on eBay, I set up daily routines on my calendar. So when I go to the gym at 11 o'clock every morning, it's on my calendar. Lunch time's on there, dinner time's on there, vet appointments, doctor appointments, all of that's on my calendar. I take a look at my phone every morning when I'm having breakfast. I look at what's on my calendar for the day and I check in at lunchtime, I check in in the evening and I make sure that I'm keeping on top of the things that I wanna get done. The next layer of calendars that I have is for big projects. Projects that have a lot of notes, that have a lot of moving parts, that may involve other people or other tasks that I wanna make sure that I get done. And for that, I use a 90 day planner. This is the one that I'm using right now. It's by Goal Crazy. I'll put a link in the description. It's 90 days worth of everything that you need to get a job done. It, in the beginning, it has you go over and review what big project you wanna work on. This planner is, you can use it for multiple things, but I like it for a big task. I used this when I was launching my book and finishing up the editing, the formatting, and creating the Audible version. There were a lot of people to coordinate with and a lot of deadlines. And so I used one of these to get my book launched. Right now, this one I'm using to do some home improvements. In the next 90 days, I wanna get my entire condo painted. I want to replace some of the lighting and I would love to replace the flooring. I'm gonna do all of that as a DIY. I've started on the painting, which is why there's no painting behind me and why there were some weird marks on some videos I did last week. But I've got the living room painted now. I'm working in the dining room. The kitchen's next. I'm also doing a deep declutter as I go through. And so everything that I want to get done as part of the home improvements that I'm doing over the next 90 days, I'm using this to plan. In addition to having a big overview of what it is you want to get done in the next 90 days, it has it broken down into smaller pieces. So it'll have a month review overview. So at the beginning of the month, you write down what it is that you wanna get done for that month. And it'll ask you, you know, week one, week two, week three, week four, what are your goals for those? And then it drills down deeper. And each at the beginning of each week, it'll, it'll ask you to review what is it that you're looking to do this week? So you can get a little more detailed. And each week as the weeks go by, if you didn't get everything done from the first week, you can carry them over to the second week. It allows you to take a deeper look and see, am I on track? Am I just planning and dreaming? Or am I actually doing the things that I need to do to get this project done? I love it. When you're done doing your review for the beginning of the week, it has a daily page. Each day has two pages. On the left-hand side, I'll show you. On the left-hand side, it has all the things you want to get done. It has what you're grateful for, what you're looking forward to, what the most important task of the day is, what are the things that you need to get done, what are the things that would be nice to get done. And then it ha on that same left-hand side page, it has a bullet list where you can write down all the things that you need to do. At this point, when I'm doing this, I pull out my phone. My, I'm filming with my phone, so I can't use that as a prop but I'll pull out my phone and I will pick a time and I will schedule on my phone each of the tasks for my big project. At the, on the right hand side, it has an evening review. I will leave this book at home. I leave it on my coffee table with my big planner that I'm gonna go over next. 
in the evening after I've had dinner, I'll do a review and I'll take a look at my list. I still have a few hours left where I can get things done if I, if I didn't get things done earlier. And I will take a look at my bullet list and I'll see, did I get everything that I needed to get done, done? And how am I looking on the things that would have been nice to do? Sometimes the things that I think I need to do in the morning, for whatever reason, I choose not to do them that day and I'll put, I'll schedule them for a different day. Here's an example. I want to repot the hanging plants on my patio, but right now I've got plastic sheeting taped up to the wall of the exit that leads to the patio. I've got new curtains coming that I ordered that will be delivered on Sunday. So it would really be better for me to wait to try and get past that plastic sheeting until Monday because when the curtains arrive on Sunday, I'm gonna hang them. And once I hang the curtains, going in and out the sliding door to the patio is gonna become much more easy. When I, when I put the, you know, potting the hanging plants on there for an earlier date, I didn't really think about the plastic sheetings and things like that happen pretty regularly. I'll plan something. Another example is I ordered a new ceiling fan for my dining room. I'm also going to be replacing the light in my kitchen and the lights in my bathroom. I was planning on doing it myself because I've seen it done. My, my ex-husband used to change the lights all the time. And so I thought, oh, I'll do it myself. I could do it. It's, I can watch some YouTube videos. I can figure out the wiring. And then I remembered that every time he replaced a light, he had me to hold it up for him. And I don't have anybody to hold it up for me. So I don't think I can do it by myself because I don't think I can hold it up and do the wiring and see into it at the same time. So in order to save money, I'm going to hire an electrician to come in and change out the lights or maybe get a friend to help me. But I'm going to have all the lights ordered and here before I do that to save money because they charge by the hour. So rather than having them come back and forth and pay for that time each time they come, I'm going to have all the lighting that I want to do already ordered and here and ready so they can knock it out all in one visit. So sometimes you'll plan something, you know, just those are just a couple examples. Sometimes you'll plan something and then as you're going through your list, you realize that, you know, this would be better if I do it next week after I've done X, Y, and Z. So long story short, this is what I use for big projects that have a lot of tasks and I coordinate this with my, with my phone. And so I make sure that I get everything done. Now, I talked about my big planner, which is this one. And this is a classic size happy planner. The, hap the reason that I like the happy planners is because they're undated and you buy inserts and you can buy daily inserts, weekly inserts, monthly inserts. I could use this instead of the 90 day planner. What I like about the 90 day planner is the only thing that goes in here is the big project I'm working on each quarter. Each quarter, I have a big thing that's exciting to me that I want to give all my attention to, all my focused attention to. Now, of course, you still have to work. You still have to earn your income and keep track of your appointments. And for those types of things, when you want to be able to look at a whole month at a time, and actually see what's on there. You can use your Google Calendar if you use that. I like paper. I like to be able to, to write things down and thumb through a month at a time, probably because I've been doing it for so long. But what I do in here is meal planning. And as I, I have a section in here for meal planning, so on Sunday nights, I will plan my meals, I'll order my groceries, I'll have them delivered. And a lot of times um, I will do that and also do some some meal prepping as well. I like to do the meal planning in here because I can see it all on one page. As you get older, your eyesight diminishes and it's just easier for me to see a big page where I can write than sometimes on my computer screen. I also have a to-do section, but I don't use it. Um, all of my to-dos are on my phone because I like the reminders and I like the electronic aspect of it. When I have content ideas, I have a note section on my phone that I will add them to because I've always got my phone with me. If I get a stream of consciousness flowing through my brain and I get five ideas all at one time, I could even be driving and I can say, hey Siri, add XYZ to my notes and it's 
I don't forget about it. So I don't use the to-dos on here because between my project planning and my phone, I've got it covered, but, but a lot of people would. What I do use it for is content planning. And I've got monthly tabs for the rest of the year. So I've got, for example, I've got January right now. And so January's got all my content for my two YouTube channels and my two blogs out here. I can also write down if I'm posting on TikTok or Instagram on here. I'm not as focused on TikTok or Instagram. Most of my focus for my content is on my YouTube channel. And I usually will write a blog, organize my thoughts and do some research before I create a video. My blog, I'm not really focused on, but I use it to organize my thoughts for the various videos that I do. So I've got two blogs and two, two videos that I produce content for each week. This allows me to keep track of when I've got things scheduled. I like to schedule four weeks in advance. Right now, I'm trying to get 12 weeks in advance because there's a good possibility that I'm going to have my thyroid removed in the next few months. I've got Graves' disease and my thyroid has nodules on it and they're, they've grown a lot and it's time for it to go. I want to have enough content already scheduled that when I have downtime due to surgery, I don't have to worry about it. And so right now I'm working on content that is, let's see, how far out am I? And the thing with the, the content is each week you still have to create what, what was for that week. So I'm about, I'm still about four weeks out right now and I'm trying to, to gain on it. But this is the big planner that I use for content. I don't use this planner for budgeting. I don't like writing my budget out on paper. I prefer using an electronic app and letting it do all the math for me. So I use Mint for that, as I've said many times before. Mint is my, I've been using it for, oh gosh, I've been using Mint since 2010 and I like it. It's easy, does everything I need it to do, doesn't cost anything, syncs with all my banks. And then for retirement planning, I've been using personal capital to project my the success of my goals and stick to my plan. So that's pretty much all. Oh, I've got one more. The last thing that I plan for is my workouts. I started losing strength recently when I was having, when my thyroid went nuts and was very overactive. So what happened as one of the symptoms of an overactive thyroid or hyperthyroidism, it uh, causes muscle loss and muscle weakness. And I noticed it. I noticed when I was climbing stairs for customers that I was having a hard time climbing the stairs. There was one weekend where I was having trouble getting up off the couch and it was alarming because I use my body every day for work and I could tell that something, something wasn't right. So after going to the doctor and getting on medication, I decided that it was time for me to, to take strength training seriously. So I started going to the gym. I joined a local Planet Fitness where the prices are very good and I started going regularly. And I've gone to the gym off and on my whole life. So I'm familiar with the machines, but I wanted something a little more structured. So I read uh, a book by Mike Matthews, um, Thinner, Leaner, Stronger. It's the women's version. He's got a book for men and he's got a book for women. The premise is basically the same. It's just slightly different focus because our bodies are a little different. And then he also has a companion workout book that goes with his other book, which is called The One Year Challenge. And this is what I'm doing. I started it in September and I've got the one for women. They've got another one for men. Obviously, this is too big to take to the gym though, but it's got all the workouts whether you want to go two times a week, three times a week, four times a week, it's got workouts for each week, depending on how often you want to go. I'm doing a five day a week plan and it's got 52 weeks of workouts for two times a week, three times, four times, or five times. And then every eight weeks, it's got a break planned in there. So it takes all the guesswork out, which I love. And so every Sunday night, I will take this book, and then I will take this littler book and I write in what I'm supposed to be doing that week. And so I've been doing this for 12 weeks now and I write in all the exercises. If there's a new one that I'm not familiar with, I'll look it up on YouTube and I'll view how, how to do the, the workout. If it's something that I can't do at my gym, which there've been one or two things that I couldn't do at the gym, I will research alternatives and then so Monday when it rolls around and it's time to go to the gym at 11 o'clock 
on my on my phone calendar. I just have this book in my purse because it's small enough that it'll work, fit in my daily carry. And I just take this around with me, to, this and a pen, and I go machine to machine and I, or, you know, barbell to barbell or Smith, a lot of stuff's on the Smith machines or dumbbells. And I will just do everything that my plan says to do. So it takes all the thinking out of it, which I, which I'm enjoying. And I've been seeing results. I've gotten stronger every week. I'm lifting either, I'm either lifting heavier weight or I'm doing more reps each week. So I know that I'm regaining my strength back and I've noticed it. When I'm climbing stairs, I can, it, I'm not out of breath. I'm not struggling. I can get up and down off the couch again. And so that gives me peace of mind knowing that I'm not losing my strength and therefore not losing my mobility. So I've been working on that and that's how I plan my workouts. There's a spot in here. This is a log book, just a simple log book that I got on Amazon. And it's, I like it because it's got a lot of pages. Like I said, I've been doing it for 12 weeks and I still have several months to go in here, but it's got big enough pages and enough writing space that I can write down the exercise that I'm gonna do. It's got enough room for five sets. So you could do warm up sets and regular sets. You can write your weight, you can write your, your reps, you can write down how long your rest intervals are, notes, cardio, how you're feeling, all of that stuff. You can get all of that in this book. Now, the same people that made this monster also made this, which is a, a log book that I bought after. I already had this one when I was going to the gym on my own. And so I just kept using this. But I did buy the one that goes with the workout book and the other book that I read. I'm not sure I'm gonna like it as much though, because look at the difference. This one, the spaces are so tiny that like even the spot to write your exercises, there's not really enough room to write it. And some of these exercises, when they're new to me, I can't really write an abbreviation because I don't know what the exercise is. Whereas this one, This one just has more space to write it. So I have more room here to write out the whole workout. Whereas this one, you know, I love what he did with the workouts and I like the, the other book too, but I don't think I love the, the log book as much. So when this one runs out, I'm probably not gonna use, I may try and use this one, but I can already tell this one's not gonna have enough space for me. So I'll probably just get another one of these. Plus this one is, bound like a paperback book so it doesn't open flat and this one is spiral bound so I can flip it around and it's just I think it's going to be easier to use at the gym so I I think this one's a no and this one's a yes but I'll let you know but I'm pretty sure I'm pretty sure this one's a no just from you know usually your gut feeling on something if I can't open it flat and I can't really write what I'm doing in there that's going to frustrate me and I'm not looking to be frustrated at the gym I'm looking to get in and get out and be stronger. So that's it for my planners. That is how I plan my days and how I execute my plan because what you do is the truth. What you say you're gonna do is a wish. So the difference between wishing and doing is not only creating your plan, but executing your plan. These tools are worthless if I don't use them but I use them and I love them and I get things done. So I hope this helps you get things done too. Bye for now. If you enjoyed this video, nudge the like button. If you would like to see more like this, consider subscribing. If you would like to read the blog or check out my new book, I'm gonna leave links to them in the description. Thank you for watching. Bye till next time.